Okay, in this tutorial, we're just going to make a kind of a little steam engine. Yeah, this is my steam engine here, huh? Very exciting steam engine, isn't it? But you notice what I have in here. We're going to do it with the smoke as well. So, but it's inside this domain, like this. And this is a our domain right here for smoke, 30 subdivisions. If we even do less than that, maybe as low as 24, just because we want it to be quick. I try and do like a real time environment. Maybe make this steam train, steam engine go around the track. Of course, you can modify your steam train to look much nicer than that, but this kind of serves as the example. So, what I have in here is just this object I call cube. Well, we're going to change that, so we're going to call that train so we know what it is. But that's not the only thing. In here, I have a separate object that I mapped to this location. And this location is parented to this here. So, if I grab this and move it, you can see it follows it along. And on here is where I put my flow here. So I've just changed it like normal. And I'm emitting from the mesh. And I put the initial velocity on like this. So then I'm running it here. So I actually have a keyframe set up already. So I'm going to get rid of those keyframes for the moment because that's not all that I want. OK, so uh, let's see for this object. I'll go down, down to that keyframe, remove it. Oops, remove it and up to that keyframe and remove it. And I'm just going to leave it there. So I want to be able to make this go around a circle. So that's one thing. And then, so let's show you the problems that come in. So maybe from above, maybe I'll start a circle that says, I don't know, it's going to be over here like this. I'll press Shift A and add a Bezier circle. Where's my circle? That'll work. All right, I'll scale it up a little bit kind of approximate it to be right there. And let me see. Yeah, that's good enough for just where it's going to be. Now there's a couple ways we can do this. We can either, you know, attach this to the path, but the best way to do this is we if we just attach it to the path. So like for instance if I do if I click this here, let me move up a little bit closer. Let me move that up too. If I click this and then shift click that and do control P and do follow path, let's do let's run Alt A and see what happens. Well it's going around the path like that for the hundred frames. Well we could do that for now, I guess. That wouldn't be that that'd be okay. But it's going hmm. It's going in the wrong direction. Let's see if we can change that around here. Frames 100 evaluation time follow. Yeah, we can change that around just by taking this path and doing RX180 like that. And then we'll take this and do RX180 like that. Okay, now let's press Alt A. Yeah, well, that's not really the best curve path follow, but you know, I think you get the idea. But the problem is. Let me see. Where is that? That's on RZ, RZ. So I'm going to flip that around like this. So make this down to 100 and 100. Okay, Alt A. So there it is, falling around the path. But you see, there it goes. There's our smoke. But only the smoke when it gets into the domain. like in here. So press Alt A. And so it runs like that. But of course we want the domain to be part of the whole situation too, right? So let's see if we can parent the domain as well. We're going to parent the domain to the path. Control P path follow. Let's see if that'll work. Yeah, it will once we set them in the right location. Okay, so let's see. I'm just going to take this guy. Let me see. I want to take this guy. Let me see if I move him over there. See what happens there. This is I would usually I would usually use curve deform because curve deform gives you more control over your timing. Well, anyway, this kind of gives you an idea. There's your. That's how you would set up your general train cruising around the track, blowing smoke. And you wouldn't even need to make the domain that big anyway. Oh, well, it's changing it because I have the adaptive domain set. And there it goes. All right, so really straightforward. And that works because it's, well, it didn't take any time to render it. But 
this kind of effect really easy to set up in Blender but the other way to do it is if you want to have more control the problem with this form of control with a path when you come up here to the curve is it evaluates it over 100 frames but if you want to have more control set it up set your object up using a modifier like this and use the curve modifier in here all right and when you do that it gives you keyframe control over these axes it'll go around the path but if, if if x is set if i move along x it'll cruise around the circle but i've done a video on that you'll have to see that tutorial in my uh, curves it's in there somewhere under modifiers or curves i can't remember or maybe i'll do a another tutorial on this okay well that's it for now and i'll see you in the next lesson